it is 11.01 Central Time, so 9.01 Pacific and uh, 12.01 Eastern, <laughs> um, and then Mountain Time in there too. Um, but thank you all so much for joining. My name is Anna Tiger. Um, I am the fitness director with Texas A&M University, and uh, Cheyenne, who usually is with me on these roundtables, um, actually was not able to join today, so you're just going to be with me. Um, so I just ask that if you do have something to say throughout the discussion, uh, please make sure to unmute yourself. I'm going to try to manage the chat as much as possible, but obviously um, speaking, facilitating, and managing the chat is sometimes challenging. So feel free to unmute yourself and speak. I would love to hear you, and that's what we're here for is to join in this discussion. So before we get started, um, if you want to keep your camera on, you can or turn it off. It's totally up to you. Um, I just ask that you mute yourself um, right now before we get started. Um, this session is being recorded, so it will be posted on the Nursa Ideas and Motions webpage. So it, um, if you're not able to stay for the whole time, feel free to jump on there. Typically in a couple days, they have those posted. Um, I already said, please make sure you're muted unless you want to speak. Use the chat box for questions and comments. And if y'all want to go ahead and right now put your name and your institution where you're from in the chat box, um, the recording does save the chat box as well. So you'll be able to go back there and look at the chat as well. So feel free to jump on the chat box, uh, type in your name and your institution um, and where, where you're from. Uh, and then continue to utilize Nursa Connect for future, um, for resource sharing and conversation. So guidelines for participation just ask you to respect all attendees. Uh, each person is, uh, you know, has their own um, expertise and ideas and viewpoints. So just be respectful of them. And um, also when unmuting yourself and speaking, um, view this as a no judgment space. All ideas are welcome and we want to hear and learn and share with each other. Um, and then there's no one size fits all when it comes to this. So one thing might work in one institution or one state, it might not work in another, but that's the goal is for us just to share and get new ideas. Um, so topics covered on the first round table, we've done, I believe this is our fifth round table for fitness specifically. So on the first round table, we covered group fitness, virtual classes, music platforms um, and methods. We talked about personal training, tracking assessment, refunds, um, of passes. You can check out all of these previous recordings and roundtables on the NURSA Ideas in Motion webpage. Um, the second top session, we talked about liability, accessibility, staff engagement, so virtual engagement, community engagement. On the third roundtable, we talked more about hiring, onboarding, and training, special events and marketing, continuing virtual options. And then on our fourth round table, we talked really a lot about reopening procedures um, specific to all of these different topics or program areas, um, and then maintaining essential status. And that's really gonna be a, a kind of a start for our conversation today is reopening, because I know that is a, a heavy and hot topic um, right now, especially based on the conversation in the NURSA Connect and on our NURSA Collegiate Fitness Directors Facebook page. So my first question is just um, specifically, maybe for those of you who have reopened um, or are getting ready to reopen soon, are there things that you've learned and want to share? Or are there challenges that you're facing um, or questions that you have? So go ahead, if anybody wants to start us off, you can unmute yourself and speak. Or I can start. <laughs> um, so I know at Texas A&M, one of the challenges, and I will just go ahead and start the conversation around masks and face coverings. Um, specifically, our institution issued a mandatory face covering policy for the entire university um, starting this yesterday, so effective June 9th, uh, 15th. And um, so when we got word of this, we weren't really sure what, how that was gonna apply to our rec facility and our programs. So we were allowed to submit um, exemptions. They are granting exemptions. So we submitted an exemption. We created, a, did some research really digging into mask usage and exercise and the 
uh, physiology behind that and the effects of that. And we submitted it to this task force. Um, and then on Sunday, we found out that our exemption was approved. So right now our policy is that masks are required or face coverings are required everywhere on campus at Texas A&M. Um, and then when people walk into and enter the building of our rec center, as well as moving around the rec center, they have to have a face covering. But when they're teaching like staff or fitness instructors, um, or exercising, they do not have to have a face covering. So that's something that we've learned and a challenge that we've faced, um, especially when it comes to programming. Uh, we are getting ready to start in-person group fitness classes in two weeks. So we're excited about that and getting ready to train our staff and all of that uh, in the mitigation stuff in regards to um, social distancing or physical distancing and things like that. Um, does anyone else that's reopened have things they want to share that they've learned or challenges? I know there's some schools in Texas um, that are also opened. I see Daniel's face mask while exercising is a hot topic right now in North Carolina. Yes, it seems like Texas, I know, was um, earlier to reopen um, and start their phase one and then the east coast because that's where my family is too um seem to be a little bit you know um maybe like a month behind not behind in any way but just in the phasing in of reopening so um if y'all have questions about that you know we've we've already started that process jenny said that ace is offering a webinar next week yep on face coverings so that's going to be hopefully really good information I know that I believe um, SCW is also pu putting out a lot of good webinars on th on different topics like that. Um, so those are good to check out. Uh, Judy said, what distance are you using for physical distancing for in-person fitness classes? Um, so we are, you, we are using six feet for participants and then we're probably gonna be spacing them 12 feet from the instructor space. Um, like I said, we're starting in two weeks, so we don't have anything yet in place in regards to like floor markings or anything just yet for our specific location. I see someone's enforcing 10 feet. Jason. Jason, did you, do you, have you all started um, classes on your gym courts. Did you want to share about that and that experience? Uh, we have not started. We are, we actually will be getting back in the facility uh, next week from a professional staff standpoint. Um, we have had our grad assistants helping us and we have moved all of our cardio equipment to one of our gym courts and spaced it out to allow for distancing. And then we're going to use another court uh, for our group exercise classes. That way we can do a little bit more spacing between participants for that as well. Um, that'll start up on July 1st when our facility reopens. So I can kind of give an update on, on how that's going at the time. We're, we're very uncertain of how many people we will actually have for in-person classes at this point. Um, but we're also going to be uh, recording and streaming those classes. So even if you're not comfortable returning to the facility yet, um, you're still able to um, participate in, and take part in that. But we have not started that yet. Teresa, you mentioned that enforcing six feet, Teresa Fuller, about that that has been challenging in getting participants to wipe down equipment. Would you want to elaborate more on that, on your experience with that? Um, yes, we have a um, lot of students who are roommates, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, and they don't understand when they come in, well, we live together or we're a sorority together. And we're having to say, yes, but we're trying to comply with the CDC guidelines, which state. Um, so we get the eye rolls. These are college students now. <laughs> I'm just like, it just gets very frustrating. It makes my job a little hard. I'm, I'm known as the mean lady. I'm just trying to enforce the rules so that we don't get shut down. Yeah. Um, I see at Nelson, at SFA, y'all are using your gym floor for your cycling and Zumba classes. How is that going?
Hello, it's both of us here. <laughs> oh, hey, you're good. So yeah, it's been going really well. The only challenge I've noticed is like participation is pretty low for some of our classes. And I'm not sure it's because of the students not being on campus or like maybe like promotion better, but that's what we're seeing. Okay. Are y'all having, um, like, do you feel like people are doing a good job of distancing and cleaning their equipment and things like that? I think so for the most part, yeah. We're not yeah. seeing an issue with that. Okay, cool, good. We've placed additional cleaning uh, towels and bottles, stations everywhere. So it's very obvious and the instructors hand out towels when the um, participants enter the space and um, they make sure to, you know, voice, hey, clean up your equipment, make sure everything's back in order, et cetera. So I think the members are taking ownership of their cleaning responsibilities. <laughs> good, good. I know from my experience, I, although we don't have classes at the rec center yet, we have the Gold's Gym has started, you know, classes back up. So I teach at Gold's and um, their mitigation strategies seem to be going well and the, um, Participants are cleaning, they're distancing themselves. You know, we have to wear a mask into the building. Um, I feel like things, at least from my experience, have people seem to be following policies. Again, I I'm, haven't yet seen it in the, with the college students yet, but um, I feel like that's a good sign so far, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I think the only thing we're seeing as far as six feet of distance on the fitness floor with equipment, we have signs spacing the pieces if we couldn't move that equipment to create six feet of space. So some are offline, some are on. Um, so some members that are usually very vocal are also being vocal in this time. So it's a lot of just education and then also seeing, okay, what can we do? Can we take some pieces that are just low use offline and store them elsewhere so that we can open up, in this case, more strength equipment. So I think for those schools who are kind of planning on opening up, um, know that it's kind of an experiment as you go and listening to the members' needs is helpful to uh, maybe change things up as you move along. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for sharing. Let's see, lots of people putting stuff in the chat now. <laughs> um, does anyone want to share best policies or system for cleaning um, that they feel has worked well? That could be cleaning in regards to your group fitness studios, your equipment, your weight room floor. Um, just, I'm just curious about that personally, if anyone has any knowledge they want to share. Sure, I can hop on. I'm Ellen from South Dakota State University. We opened on June 1st, so we've been open for two, about two weeks now. Um, and we're actually talking about our phase two transition on July 6th. So um, our facility is open to the community members as well as our students. Um, and what we're doing for cleaning is everybody that comes into the facility gets issued a cleaning towel, so the microfiber towels. And we're not doing any other shower towels or sweat towels or anything at this time. And then they're expected to or asked to clean whatever equipment or whatever door handles they touch as they're in our facility with the spray bottles that are provided. And then drop off those towels in our towel bins before they leave the facility. Awesome. Very cool. And that's working well. You feel like people are following the protocols and. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And then we still have the. Um, wipes stations throughout the facility and hand sanitizer stations but the towels have been really well received good to know great april i see you're doing something similar that we did too having the facility open for a, like a period of time and then closing for cleaning so i know that seemed to work well with us at texas a m and obviously we have a very large institution um, we had it open from i believe 10 to 2 and then we would close until five o'clock and then reopen um and moving into the summer we're continuing that as well um to allow for those cleaning uh deeper cleaning procedures to be done 
Yeah, that's so the state of Utah's Department of Health guidelines when we're in like the moderate risk phase, um, the like gyms and fitness centers are required to have staff clean all the equipment. And then it's not the onus isn't put on the participant until we move to yellow phase. Um, so partly the reason why we're closing every couple hours is because we don't have we're, we're probably not going to have enough student staff coming back um, to be able to what we were initially going to do is have students reserve like hour time blocks and then every 15 minutes clean whatever area they were using um, but we don't think we'll have enough student staff coming back for that so we figured the couple hour chunks at a time and then closing every couple hours would be the best option yeah for sure so you you all haven't started that yet you're getting ready to though you said the next few weeks yeah um our tentative opening date will be july 6th if that gets pushed back likely only by about a week but um that's probably what's going to happen cool i think that will work i mean i don't know your institution but it's worked well for us so i hope it will work well for y'all too i see some folks asking about reservation time slots i know our weight room started with 50 minutes uh, time slots um, now that we've we realized that we were not getting up to the capacity that we that the max capacity we weren't getting up to the max capacity so we've actually will be stop stopping our res reservation process soon to um, allow for unlimited time that's obviously specific to us we weren't reaching the capacity our max capacity so there was no reason to establish or continue the reservation process for our weight room tabitha yeah so is anyone doing anything special regarding instructor mics i know at texas a m we're i purchased mic windscreens for everyone um, but does anyone else have any solutions or ideas for that that they want to share I know some gyms um, require instructors to purchase their own uh, mic, but they are they can get expensive. So I know I don't require my staff to do that, but as long as we establish policies in regards to really cleaning them down, making sure we're providing wipes for that cleaning of the mic, um, I think it's fine. The fuzzy part, the fuzzy I call it, but the windscreen is really close to your mouth. So I feel like that's probably the most important to be like changing out or having staff keep their own fuzzy. What about, um, I'm curious about personal training. Is anyone, um, has anyone started in-person personal training um, and have procedures that they want to share, things that are going well or questions? Nobody has personal training in person going on yet, just virtual. Most okay, so I see people who aren't aren't open yet are doing still continuing virtual training. I know we are not yet doing in-person training, even though we are open, but that's why I'm interested to know how that's going, if anyone is open. So maybe that'll be a topic for the next conversation once we do, um, once more people start to reopen their facilities, maybe we can talk more about the in-person training. Um, Art asked a uh, question about registration. Have people set up registration based on specific equipment or just generic using the fitness center? I know from for Texas A&M, ours is just to use the weight room. Um, we have a capacity based on the space. Um, so people would sign up to use just the weight room. I'm not, does anyone have any um, 
in their facility do you have a registration for a piece of equipment Okay, Carrie at Ole Miss, you have six zones, so they choose the zone they want to be in. That's cool. I like that. And then John, John, how is that going? Each of your individual cardio machines has a specific reservation link. How does that work? Yeah, so we haven't reopened yet, um, but we are utilizing Fusion, which we, we love. Um, and so we've gone in and input every single piece of equipment kind of as a program. So people will be able to pre-register for the equipment as though it were a program in a 50-minute time slot. Um, and then when they show up, all of our machines have like really large laminated numbers on them that will help kind of guide them to the one that they've reserved. So we're kind of doing an A day, B day situation where we're only letting odd number machines be reserved on like Mondays and then Tuesdays will be even numbered machines. So allow for the um, time in between to clean them. That's really cool. I'm interested in hearing more about that once y'all do open. So thank you for sharing. Yeah, sorry, just a bit more, John. That's great. Uh, is it um, a lot of work ahead of time planning that out in Fusion for daily or hourly registration, or was it pretty straightforward? Um, so I'm at Arizona State, so we are pretty massive. So the time commit was just getting every single machine into Fusion. Um, once you get a machine in, it's pretty easy to add recurring shifts. Um, so ours are recurring indefinitely because we don't know how long we'll be requiring reservations for our equipment. Um, but the time commitment just comes from getting each individual item in Fusion as a program. Um, but then from there, it's pretty, pretty easy. Cool. Um, Alexia, I like the question you asked. So it sounds like in general for places that are opening that participation has been low. Thoughts on why? Um, I know for us at Texas A&M, typically our numbers are always lower in the summer. Um, so I think that with the summer and the fact that we have summer school online and not in person, that's what's the biggest factor in affecting our numbers for our um, weight room and our facility. We also have had a lot less open. So like right now, even though the rec is open, we have our weight room, our cardio area and rock wall open and then that's and then the pools open um, with limited lap lane usage so really they're not there hasn't been everything open the courts aren't open the track isn't open you know so I think that once I know our next phase um, for summer two starts I think we'll start seeing more people coming in um, at least from my experience with like I said golds starting with limited capacity and now that they're opening it to classes more people are are starting to come in to the the facility and utilize the programming. I am curious about, uh, for those schools and universities who have adjusted academic schedules. So I know at Texas A&M, our fall schedule has moved up a week. And I know some other institutions um, have that as well. So that students will go back in August and then once they'll uh, Thanksgiving, happens, they'll go home for Thanksgiving and then they won't come back. They'll take their final exams online. Um, is anyone establishing or changing anything or any plans? Um, do you have any plans in place for this change um, or ideas or thoughts about this change and how it might affect your programming? I'm just curious. Hey, Anna, we can jump in on that. We just met as a staff to talk about that part. Um, so we're thinking of creating the regular schedule and um, having normal hours in the fall, but then kind of breaking back or going into break hours starting in, at the end of November when they leave, and then modifying Group X, either stopping classes or going more um, Zoom maybe. We'll see. 
but definitely modifying hours and then modifying the programming after they leave for Thanksgiving break. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, I know um, we just haven't started really thinking about it yet. I know uh, I'm thinking about um, meetings and stuff like that, starting of the semester meetings and things, but um, as a group, I know it's definitely going to affect facility hours and programming and all of that for sure. Um, oh, I got a question about the rock wall. So I do not oversee outdoor our outdoor adventures programming. I'm not exactly sure what the protocol is, um, what their cleaning pro protocol is. I know that they are, um, they have established, uh, you know, ways to mitigate that. Um, but I cannot speak to those. So if you do want to know more, you can reach out to Jason Curtin, who is our outdoor adventures director with uh, Texas A&M Rec Sports. I apologize, my dog is coughing in the background. <laughs> um, okay, I like that question, Ryan. Is anyone pushing outdoor fitness as a viable option? I think that's a great option. I know in Texas it's challenging, especially in June and July when it's very, very hot. Um, but for those of you who are not maybe in as hot of a climate, um, have you all established any outdoor um, Programming that's going well, I'd love to hear more of that. Cece, morning classes outside. Tell me yeah. more. <laughs> I can tell you more. So we have not reopened yet. Actually, um, our Austin is now becoming a bigger hotspot. So uh, the stay at home order was in. Um, initiated again until August 15th, yay. Um, but we are still planning to move forward until we get the, the no or yes from Howard University. We'll have actually our F45 classes specifically will be outside. F45 designed a, a track edition where people can do body weight exercise, still create that community, have the two instructors, and have a large group of people on a field. So we'll be using um, our different fields in different locations to be able to do that so they can be outside. Um, we're also exploring the idea, we have this big plaza in front of our um, gymnasium that's kind of in a hot spot of the campus. So we're gonna probably do some dance classes out there. Anything that doesn't require equipment essentially because that's our biggest issue right now. Yeah, for sure. Well, keep in touch because I'm interested in that for especially the, you know, being being so hot in Texas. Um, yeah, so I'm morning only, definitely yeah, morning only. For sure. We, I know we're starting our boot camp program up in summer two, which starts in two weeks, and that'll be outdoors at 6 a.m. So um, that'll be nice because I think, honestly, people are – even more um, attracted to outdoor options or looking for outdoor options because they know that, you know, it's, it's, they feel more comfortable exercising outside. So I do think we have the ability to maybe reach more people that way. Yeah, I agree. Mitzi, I know you're in Texas too. So you're um, working on scheduling classes outside. Yeah, we've been um, recommended by the student health center director and we plan to do that outside and continue with our virtual classes so that way it kind of helps fill in the gaps at this moment we're not sure if we'll be able to use any of the court space but if they let us that will definitely be something we uh coordinate with facilities so classes on the courts awesome cool keep me in posted <laughs> um all right well let's i'm gonna move along and bring us to virtual stuff. So I know that, um, you know, a lot of us shifted things very quickly on virtual or maybe already had virtual programming established, but I'm just curious about some of these things and uh, the ways that we're going to be continuing virtual programming in the fall. Um, so I know on the Collegiate Fitness Director page, it seems to have been a hot topic about program pricing. Um, does anyone have any thing like established or ideas around it. I know um, I'll speak from Texas A&M. We, we do charge for our group fitness passes. Um, 
for our unlimited pass and a one class pass. We're planning on still doing that and then offering virtual live classes as well as recorded as an add on package. Um, so it won't be a standalone, but if they want to add on that virtual option, they can. And I know we're we're hoping to establish that with Fusion. We are starting Fusion Go <laughs> this summer, demoing it, all the new things. And um, so we'll have that registration through Fusion Go. And then we're hoping to maybe establish like a Facebook group to let people in, a private one, um, to give them additional tips, reminders, videos, things like that for group fitness side of things. Um, but I'm curious, does anyone have any um, pricing ideas established if you do charge for group fitness um, or Anna, oh, personal training? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, we just had a retreat about this last like two weeks ago. So the price is not set in stone yet, but we're actually going to focus on our um, online portion more than our in-person portion because our in-person portion is not gonna be the same scale as it was before. So we feel we can't charge for it as much. Um, numbers are being tossed around, but as of right now, we're kind of leaning towards our online will be, we call it the anchor program, which will be our $12 actually a month. So we'll be charging monthly for that. And then you can add on and choose to add on in-person classes we're looking anywhere between eight to ten dollars extra a month if anybody wants to do that we feel that participants are lean, are going to lean towards the online just with the situation in austin right now um but that's kind of what we're looking at and exploring based on benchmarking we kind of did already previously on online competitors very cool awesome thank you Does anyone else have any um, pricing for a program pricing for virtual things? This can be per group fitness or personal training. Feel free to share. Nobody. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, how about virtual staff training? That's the next thing I'm curious about. Um, if anyone's planning, I know we're getting closer to the fall. Um, we typically have done our fitness instructor training in the spring, but we did not, we're not able to do that because of COVID. So we did, now shifted it all virtual and we are doing it over the summer virtual. We have 11 new fitness instructors and so far so good. So I'm really excited and proud of us for shifting everything virtual for the summer. Um, look forward to sharing how that goes with you all once it's completed. Um, but what is that, what are, what are people planning for their staff training? Are they, are you all doing anything right now or are you planning for the fall virtual staff trainings? Um, I'm curious about, about that. Hi, this is Carrie from the University of Mississippi. Um, we're kind of in the middle of planning for fall training and the department's kind of made the call. If it's something for the entire department, we need to try to figure out a way to make it virtual or um, something that you can kind of send out ahead of time with maybe a Blackboard quiz or something afterwards to kind of show the students have reviewed it. And then if you have to do any in-person training, if your staffs are too large, we have to split them up and have rotations on bringing smaller groups in prior to opening in August. Once we kind of get that date, we haven't been told that yet. So um, that's kind of the adjustments we're making. If it can go virtual or go to something that they can review via PowerPoint and have a quiz, that's the option. And only bringing students in for in-person things that have to ha occur in person and then adhering to our state, city, and county ordinances on numbers um, when we do bring them in, as well as mask. Excellent, thank you for sharing. I see planning, Tracy planning a blended approach 
with a plan B to virtual training if needed, interviews, auditions, virtual, unless the student's on campus. So it sounds like a lot of people are getting ready for planning training on uh, planning virtual training. That's great. Yes, um, Lydia, we're working on um, Canvas as well, using that for our for a training platform. Um, I like that idea. Andrew, can you share with us about Articulate? If you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, cool. It, it wasn't working earlier. I tried to say something earlier and then I got mad because I couldn't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm not really over this. Our um, leadership and development uh, assistant director has been working with this. And um, as the um, training and development team sort of puts this together, it, like I said in the comment, it looks a lot like um, a Red Cross blended learning course where you, where when someone's using it, they have these different modules. They can go through them. They will click on videos, read content. At the end of each section, you can have a check for learning question. And um, based on all that, it'll give you a grade at the end of it. And um, it, if you pass, then we haven't really figured out at the very end how it looks, but it would populate your information after you have access to this you finished page they would just type in their information and we would get a google sheet that has all the information of the people who passed uh, and so um, that's for things that don't have to be done in person it, um, uh, it 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 seems like it's pretty good for tracking we've been working on it for a while and uh, it's finally kind of become a necessity so we're exploring it more it does have a cost associated with it and so um, still kind of working through things, but it looks really promising. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I've never heard of it. Yeah, I, I don't know the cost on that, um, but um, we, can, we can find that out. Cool. What, um, okay, so for the next topic, virtual platforms, um, I know a couple people have already asked about virtual platforms or technology for the future. So my question for that is not necessarily, uh, I think most of us know that a lot of us are using social media like Instagram Live, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Zoom. Uh, what are people thinking of for the future and the sustainability of your virtual programming? Um, are you all going to be filming your classes in the studios? Are you all thinking you're still going to have your instructors teach from home? Are you going to continue virtual tr personal training in the future? Um, what type of, I know there's been questions about technology like in regards to cameras or tripods. What are people, um, looking into or have found has worked well for them or looking into for the future? I can touch on this at least uh, a little bit. At Southern Miss, um, once we kind of shifted to, all, all we did was recorded our instructors from home. Um, they would record themselves teaching a format. Um, however, our administration was, was so excited we did that, that now the expectation is that something along those lines is to keep going once we even resume in person. Um, and so the, the challenge we're working with now is we were putting those videos on our social media accounts and they were pretty much, you know, if you followed us on Facebook or Instagram, you had access to get to those. Well, now we're trying to kind of redefine that to where it would be for our members um, and that way um, you know, they would be the ones strictly that had access to it. So we're currently working with our on campus iTech uh, department to try to see what options we have for that. Um, they're trying to see if we can integrate that kind of with our, our fusion system that we use. And, and the only issue we have with that is if they're not affiliated with the university, but have a membership through the alumni association, we're trying to kind of figure out, you know, the ins and outs of, of some of those situations. But um, that's kind of where we're at right now is there would be a, a you know, we would still have the in-person classes, but during the classes, they would be recorded. So whether that's us bringing in another staff member to help record, whether that's us using a, a tripod and having them record it. Um, and iTech's even looking at that there's some way they can do kind of like a permanent camera setup in the, in the um, areas. So we're just kind of exploring all options at this point. 
Very cool. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else? This is Lisa Williamson from the University of Georgia, and our plan is similar. We will be offering in-person classes on a limited schedule, but um, we will also hopefully be offering some sort of a video on demand service where we'll film the live classes and post them on um, the portal that we will be working with ETIS to create at our, at our university. Um, we are going to continue to offer virtual personal training probably for the foreseeable future. Um, but like some folks mentioned earlier, we're also going to be adding video on demand classes. So we are, we're probably not going to be doing a lot of live classes, um, virtual classes, but we're going to be doing some on demand stuff where we can actually review the classes before we post them. So um, just from a quality control standpoint, we wanted to make sure that they were pre recorded. Um, so that's kind of what we're thinking for fall. We'll also be doing some virtual small group training uh, classes as well. Awesome. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks for sharing. Sure. I see it sounds like a lot of people have, I apologize for the train. Uh, a lot of people have things in place for the fall, continuing using Facebook Live or Zoom. Um, I like the idea of Putting in, see, uh, Cecilia, did you want to share about the kind of technology piece that y'all are putting in your studios? Sure. Um, so as of right now, it's actually being set up today. So we have a fitness room that already has like a projector um, in it. So we're trying to make that capable to connect maybe to a laptop so that the instructor can start their Zoom session from the room to give more of like a professional looking space rather than maybe a messy bedroom. Um, I'm not exactly sure what like laptop it is or what if we're using a tripod or anything like that just because I'm not involved in that too much. That's more of our admin staff. Um, that's more of the route that we're going to take still having everything online but having a few classes that are more popular offered um, in the space of this new virtual room um, so the instructor that feels comfortable can come in teach from that space and just have more professional looking background than what they currently have excellent i see a couple other people mention that francis I see that y'all are working on that as well. Do you all know what or have like your stuff established yet? Your camera and things like that? Uh, no, I've uh, I've just been looking at a lot of, of uh, online information and you know a lot of reading and just trying to educate myself and have put together a list of things for us to look at um, <clears throat> with. Uh, with some lights, maybe getting a, a mixer, um, a good video camera, uh, things of that nature, it still won't be super expensive. Um, you know, maybe $1,500, something in that range, which all things considered isn't, isn't too bad. Um, so um, like Cecilia, what we'll do is um, schedule students to come in and teach from the studio live stream it from there and then we'll have the video of of that class that we'll be able to post as well great awesome thank you very cool mc martinez are do you work for inasoft for fusion you want to you want to share I do work for Inasoft, um, but yeah, we have some virtual training or virtual program stuff being released and you sh if you're a client, you should get release notes about it tomorrow. Um, should have some accompanying videos so that you can learn all about it pretty quickly, but being able to associate that virtual URL, so that Zoom link with either a program offering or program by schedule, like the typical group fitness setup, and it can be different for every appointment. It could be the same one across board you can change it uh, customers won't get that link until it's time to join the class um, and they'll be redirected so they won't even really see the link at all they'll just get redirected to the right page and land in whatever class um, so it would be hidden 
if if you're looking for ways to hide that Zoom link to join all your classes. I know that's been a problem for some of our clients in the past of just publishing all the Zoom links online and then having strangers and random people join, uh, causing some trouble. It's hard to track, uh, but that would also track with Infusion. It would automatically check your customers into that class. Um, so you wouldn't have to manually do it for each one. You would still want someone to verify just in case that link is shared after the fact, like I could join right now and then share the link with somebody else and then they could join. So you would still want to take some form of attendance, but it, hopefully the bulk of the work would uh, be managed automatically. Very cool. Awesome. I'm excited to see that. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Well, how about virtual special events um, or specifically maybe freshman welcome events? I know our, uh, Recapalooza is our freshman welcome event. We have a committee that's working on that and making that event virtual. Um, does anyone want to share things that they're doing or ideas they have for the class of 2024, I believe? Um, I'm going to call Cece out because I know UT is doing stuff. Do you want to share? Sorry, you cut out for me. Could you repeat the question? <laughs> yeah. Um, I was asking about freshman welcome events. Oh, yes. Okay, so we actually have two classes that we have been hosting for orientation. So um, we partnered with new student orientation and we have uh, a yoga class going on that actually happened this morning. It was great. Um, we had we had about 50 people come in and out, but um, it, it would mean they there's different things going on right now. So we're getting some traction there. Out, and then a dance class on Monday nights around uh, 7 p.m. And it's only 30 minute classes. We find that if we're doing anything above 30 minutes, we lose them. So that's been really helpful in getting on um, the actual schedule for orientation uh, has been very helpful. I will say that we have had other areas in rec sport that have done sessions that haven't had as much success um, because they don't have that active piece going on. So we have been a big advocator for the rest of rec sports when getting them moving and telling them information just that's beyond just fitness and wellness. That's kind of encompassing everything. So, but it's been going really well. They seem to enjoy it. Awesome. Great. Cool. Does anyone else have Things that your department's doing for freshman welcome events or orientation events, getting them, uh, you know, familiar with your programming and your facility. Well, I will just have to ask about that next time we meet. <laughs> um, virtual health and wellness collaborations was the next thing that I wanted to bring up. Um, if anyone is working on new collaborations or maybe collaborations you had that you're now shifting virtual, I'd love to hear. I know this is fitness roundtable, but I think we can also say that fitness is wellness as well or part of wellness. So. Um, is anyone doing anything new or different in the virtual space of, of wellness collaborations on campus? This is uh, Frankie at UTD. Um, uh, we've collaborated for some time now with the Student Wellness Center, but um, uh, we also, along with them, participate in a, a greater uh, a, a wellness committee that is uh, for uh, staff, faculty, and students. It's campus wide. And um, this summer, they started doing something called Water Cooler Wednesdays, where they just have a 15 minute little water cooler break, if you will, um, one at 10 in the morning and one at three in the afternoon, so that people who are at home working virtually just get a chance to just chill out. And we've done quite a few things with them, chair stretches, kitchen sink stretching, um, you know, different ways that there are to meditate, things of that nature. So, so that's been a really good, um, a really good collaboration. And then this summer I started working really much more in depth also with the Gender Center um, and just looking for ways to 
um, to make the fitness it, world more welcoming and more appealing to populations that have had a hard time walking into into the physical space. It seems to be it's it's a it's an easier and different approach when you're in a virtual space. For sure. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Paul, do you want to share what y'all are doing at LSU? I'd love to hear more. Sure. Um, thanks for hosting this. Uh, yeah, so we've been doing these live Q&As um, every Wednesday for the last about two months now. Um, and the original idea was just kind of gather some input from a lot of our uh, community of different questions that they might have. We kind of throw a topic out there and just try to gather as much as we could so that we can kind of see where a lot of our, our users' thoughts are right now. Um, and that collaboration turned into working with the Student Health Center because they loved the idea. And so we started off with conversations about nutrition. Uh, so it was something as basic as, hey, what's your game plan when you start going into the grocery store? Uh, how do you stay away from the pantry now that you're living at home all day? How do you meal plan? All these different kind of things. Um, and then that trying to, that once one group heard about it, um, then other areas of the Student Health Center started reaching out. So uh, that conversation turned into mental health and depression, isolation, um, kind of building a community in a time where you're self-isolating and social distancing. And then, then when we found gaps in the schedule, that's when we fill in with a lot of our fitness staff, uh, having ideas and different tips about positive psychology or kind of goal planning and game planning when uh, you don't really know what your goals are during this time. So how do you kind of go through that process? Um, so we've been doing that for a couple months now, and uh, it's really built a strong bond between our fitness and wellness staff and the Student Health Center, something that we hope to certainly continue as we move forward. Awesome. I love it. Thanks for sharing. Someone asked what your attendance numbers are. How are you? You're getting a good amount of people participating? Yeah, so we, we measure that all through Zoom, um, and I want to say registrations, it's usually about 30. Uh, we've averaged between 20 and 30 for each of these sessions. The sessions last no longer than 30 minutes um, when we do them every Wednesday, uh, but what we see is that we put it up on our YouTube afterwards, and we have the links all over our website, so the nice part of that is it's a resource moving forward, so yeah. uh, we can always measure and track those views in the future. Uh, but for now, at least we now have those conversations out there and it's content that we can always kind of recycle in the future if necessary. Awesome. Cool. Well, I'm going to shift to the last slide is really because um, we only have about five minutes. So I just want to open up the floor for questions for the group. Um, if you want to share uh, things you've learned or think questions that you have for all of us or problems or solutions that we talked about on past topics. Um, just open up the floor for folks who want to want to speak. Love to hear from you. I, have, I actually have a question for the group. Um, has anybody explored the idea? I know masks are a big topic, but the idea of putting that plexiglass that you see at grocery stores in front of your instructor. Um, and if so, how are you doing it? What, what, have, what are the challenges? What are the pros and cons and things like that? This is Carrie from the University of Mississippi. Um, we hadn't thought about putting those in front of our instructors, but our facilities management team on campus is outfitting um, the plexiglass screens for any space that you need. You just have to measure and kind of talk with them about what you want. So they're doing that for the entire university with um, academics being the priority um, with if you're reopening earlier, they'll get you in before academics. So they're helping us with some of our screens for reopening at certain spaces. Um, so that might be something you could look into is just having one specially made that would be movable but on the floor, I guess. Uh, I just don't know how that would impact the class and movement depending on what format it is. Great, thank you. Yeah, Cece, I don't, I haven't looked at them really for, for our program, but I do know people who 
instructors who have to wear them. Um, I know at the Cooper Institute, I believe in Dallas or um, they're, they're wearing them, or the instructors are, and the, the biggest issue is they get fogged up. Um, so I know one of our instructors just bought one. Um, she teaches, well, it's Lucy, you know Lucy, but um, she teaches for our kinesiology department and they're gonna have to teach academic classes, you know, come fall. So I know she purchased one for, that is like an anti-fog uh, mask, plexi plastic thing. So I'm interested, I know she hasn't used it yet, but I'm interested to see how that goes for her classes. Yeah, I've, we've bought at least like five different types. <laughs> And I actually had my cousin make one because he's in that business surprisingly right now. So they're all, the problem is they all continuously get fogged up. So I was wondering if there was the, a giant flexi box you could put in front of the instructor essentially <laughs> that may make it better. So. Any other questions or comments? Thoughts? I have a quick question. I know we talked briefly about <laughs> outdoor class offerings, but um, our really option for us here in Arizona, we're about 120 <laughs> at the, the top of our day. Um, so my question is, are y'all experiencing or experimenting at all with aqua classes? That's a, a realm we haven't been very successful with in terms of fitness in the past, but mm -hmm. it's a space that we have a little That's bit more horrific. freedom in um with the new kind of covid policies that go with our facility hey john um we're still planning to have um our aqua based um aqua size class that we do um as far as the pool itself we're going to have it open limited times during the day and only for lap swimming um we're also only gonna allow one person per lane. We've usually allowed two and and then had other times for just kind of open rec swimming, but it's just gonna be lap swimming. Um, but then the rest of the natatorium is shut down. Can y'all hear me still? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, sorry, my screen went out on me. Um, the um, the natatorium is shut down when we do that so with the way our pool is and with the the few numbers we get for that class it's not not our you know booming class by no means but we're still able to distance out participants pretty well with that um and so we're still going to attempt that class and kind of see what our numbers are once we get back um I'm Ramona from the University of Toronto Scarborough. So in terms of our aqua programming, we're just limiting it to the one person per lane right now. So we're, we've eliminated our leisure swim and actually for aqua fit, um, for aqua fit classes is probably one of the very popular classes, especially with our community. So we'd actually get like a group of 50. So we're not going to be offering that class, but what we will do is just in terms of the shallow water, offer a lane per participant, and they could do their own individual um, exercises in that. Great, thanks for sharing y'all. Sorry, my dog has, you know, just has to start barking at me right now when I'm on when I'm on Zoom calls. Um, well, thank you all so much for joining this conversation. Um, it is 12 o'clock Central Time, so we've been chatting for an hour now. I want to respect your time. Um, if you have any other questions that you want to ask me about personally, you can. My email is here. Um, do make sure that if you're not a part of the collegiate fitness directors page that you join that. So if you just, if you have a Facebook, if you search for collegiate fitness directors and then click to join, you'll just have to answer some questions before being accepted into that group. But we'd love to have you there. Um, other than that, I look forward to seeing you all again sometime soon, hopefully, and have a great rest of your day and week.